Jason, notices, acceptance, and addenda. It seems like we already kind of covered this one earlier on. Yeah, we're melding. Melding. Yeah, this is, this is you know, we've, we've covered a lot of these things in some of the other classes we've done. But again, the goal for this particular class is to make sure that that at least some of it be seen by everybody. Yeah. And in our, in our other classes, like the Repsi class, there's more information on this. But yeah, we go over the whole thing. This is a quick hit. Detail. Yeah. So <clears throat> this this is actually interesting because part of this is being clear. And I want to be clear, like on the last section, mm -hmm. the additional earnest money, if you put down additional earnest money, that's never refundable. That's hard so money. That's right there. It's and so, gone. Yeah. So, like you said, it makes the <laughs> offer a lot more attractive. But if they hit the financing condition, they can't get financing. The money's gone. That, that was hard earned money from the very get go. Okay. So now we're going to go over um, acceptance. So, in the contract, mm -hmm. like I said, like most of this you can learn by just reading. So, all right. So, well, let's just talk about like what a contract needs to exist. Right, there needs to be two parties because, mm -hmm. like, if one person just agrees to do something, then they just I said to myself, and I knew it was me because I was wearing my underwear. Right, don't need a contract. Um, contracts, two parties, two parties have to agree to something. Mm -hmm. We're going to exchange goods, services, cash, right? And so, in order to be a complete contract, I can't just be like, "Hey, Garth, this is what you're going to do. Write it and be like, boom, not a contract." So in this case, I would say, hey, Garth, I want to buy a house. This is how much I'm going to buy it for. This is how things are going to perform, and these are the deadlines, yeah. right? Okay. And then you would see it, and you would say, this works great. And then you would accept it. Right. Boom, we have a contract, okay? If you didn't accept it, <coughs> you would counter offer. You wouldn't put an addendum on it. You would counter, right? Okay. Everything, I agree <coughs> to everything as long as this, right? So you counter, um, well, first, acceptance happens when we got signatures on everything, right? Okay. It's functioned. Now, it's interesting because there's, section 25 is offer and time of acceptance. So it says, hey, we're going to buy this. If you don't accept this by whatever time, this is the time when you can break away from 5 p.m. Because, like, maybe, you know, you need to know really soon. You're looking at a few houses. I need to know by tomorrow. But I'm well aware that you're working right now and you will be working tomorrow. So I'll give you till 7. So you go home from work, talk to the missus, whatever. Right. So I'm thinking, uh, let's say I agreed to buy your home. And I'm trying to, again, to separate clearly the difference between an addendum and a... Uh, and a counter offer. Let's say that I want the grand piano in the house. Sure. So if I were to do that as a counter offer, it would be I, you know, I'm counter offering that this deal goes through if you give me the grand piano. And the addendum would be I, I agree to the deal and you're giving me the grand piano for X number of dollars. Is that, yeah, is that how that flies? Ish. In lending, you just screwed it because, um, or sorry, you just made it a little more difficult because <laughs> realist um, mortgage lenders lend on real property, not personal property. And a grand piano is personal property, not real property. I can't do a mortgage on a grand piano, which is what you just did by adding it to the contract, which is... So a moral of that story is don't don't add stuff to the Repsy. Yeah. Yeah. There's, and there's a bill of sale. And, and, there's, and you can say, hey, there's stuff that's coming along with this, and that's included on a bill of sale. And you can put that as part of the contract. Mm -hmm. Like, it has value. We're aware it has value. If you put it, this is a total side note, if you put it on the contract, if you put real property on the contract, which you can do, and you list it in Section 1.2, you also put that this is included at no cash value. And then shoo, away you go. Right? Okay. So, um, offer and acceptance. So, wait. Addendum, counter offer. Mm-hmm. Clear? I, I think we're clear on that. Okay, so you're sending this offer out. You give them until 7 o'clock tomorrow um, to accept it. And you're putting in 7 o'clock in the document that says we have until 7 o'clock 7 p.m. Mountain Time on <coughs> the next day. 
Okay, that's that's in writing. That's in a, there's a field somewhere where you put 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if they don't, this offer shall lapse, and the brokerage shall return any earnest money to the buyer. So, I've worked with you. We wrote the contract. I gave you my earnest money. You deposit the earnest money to the brokerage. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock comes. We don't hear it back. You giving me my earnest money back, and away we go. Is this contract void? Earnest money is given back. Uh, I'm going to say yes. I mean, you could always uh, if you got both sides agreeing to. But the seller really hasn't responded. Uh huh. So it's just open ended. All right. So if you if if you have an offer written, you you have half of a contract, two thirds of a contract. You got the property, the price, the one party, the other party just didn't respond. Mm -hmm. There's no expiration date. Right, you can withdraw the offer. You can something. You can do that to, to back it off. But if the seller comes back and the contract's still open, they can accept it and say, "Hey, you want to put down earnest money again?" Now the seller can't accept the contract and demand performance because there's deadlines, right? Because they have a response deadline. So the seller can't force performance, but they can accept the contract. Fifteen years later, they can be like, "Hey, you still want to buy the house? Because we got that contract. That's absurd." But like in a week, they can say, hey, we had something. Is your offer still good? We'll do it. Reinstate it. Throw the earnest money back down. Send a counter offer, mm -hmm. I would recommend, for new deadlines. Because if you send an addendum and they say, we don't agree to this addendum, we're going to go with the previously agreed on, uh -huh. then you're, you're two weeks behind and your deadlines are all mashed up, right? Because they don't have to accept the addendum. I have seen where deadlines are uh, kind of uh, played with as part of the negotiation game. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually buying a property that was a foreclosure, so the other side was a bank. Mm -hmm. And we were playing a game of um, bluff. Uh, what's that game where you're driving right at chicken? Each other? Chicken. We were playing Not that I know. I've never played that game. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I was too much of a nerd. I'm an engineer. I, I was the kid who, you know... Didn't get invited to those parties, but the there was a deadline of you know Tuesday five o'clock, mm -hmm. and they were just waiting for me to to see what I was going to do, and I let Tuesday five o'clock go past. They called me at Tuesday five o two, and they said, "All right, here's what we're willing to do." <laughs> so you know, I'm I'm not suggesting to uh, to anyone that that's how you play the game. Yeah. Well, here's a very real problem, right? So you have, so we wrote the offer, so I didn't reply for two weeks. We had kind of based everything on if they accepted at, at this time, the acceptance date, mm -hmm. right? Um, now all our deadlines are off by two weeks. We're not sure if they can obtain financing by that timeline. So you send over an addenda to update the deadlines. Seller doesn't accept your addenda. Problem is now, you're already under contract. Deadlines are already set. The addenda didn't cancel the contract. Mm -hmm. If you countered and they don't accept, it forces their hand, right? This is what we need. You don't accept the counter. All, all deals are off, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure you're doing it right. Now, also, the, something in addenda is it's understood. I have one somewhere. Where it says, like, uh, everything else can remain unchanged. Unless we're saying it here, it's all good. I don't know where my agenda is. So, like, it gives a, a, diff a separate box, like, where, hey, we want the deadlines to be changed. These are the deadlines we want to change in accordance or in conjunction with these other changes. Mm -hmm. It's got that. Um, but be super, super clear, because I've had... Um, purchase prices change, uh, seller paid costs change, um, inclusions and exclusions change, um, all in addenda, right? And so it's really handy, and I, I, we do this a lot in uh, construction loans or for new builds because they've got, they don't even number them, but they've got like the super duper cool upgrade Mm -hmm. addenda 
and the <coughs> doohickey thing deal addenda. And so we require to make sure that we're covered an addenda to state on this date, this is the final purchase price. And everybody sign it. So for example, uh, let, let's, let's go down that road. My daughter is buying a home and vineyard from yeah. a contractor. Yeah. And he decides that he wants to put a better home on this lot than she is buying. Okay. And so he offers another lot to her. And in some way, what it, however he does this, he gets her to agree to take the new lot um, you know, under certain conditions. Uh, under this scenario, do they just write a whole new repsy, or do they do an addenda, or do they do a counteroffer? So, that can be done any which way. Mm -hmm. In that situation, I would recommend as a lender to start a whole new contract. Mm -hmm. Because in an addendum or a counteroffer, you can change any of the details of the purchase contract. I mean, that's what it does. We're going to change what's going on, right? an amendment would be more correct. But in Utah, we don't have amendments. We just have addendum and counteroffers. So you're going to say, hey, this is to be the property. So if you're changing the address, mm -hmm. I would really recommend a new purchase contract. But it, you can do it. It could be done using another vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it gets, gets confusing when you've got 20-something ad addenda, but you can do it. You can have giant contracts, you know? Yeah. So keep it clean. And then this is where it comes down really good to agree to things in writing before you agree to things in writing on the purchase contract or addenda. And, and then when you're writing it on the addenda, be super specific so and clear and concise. So I, I have a lot of times um, buyers are buying a house agreed upon price. They have home inspection. Mm -hmm. They realize that there's repairs that they want made that aren't appraisal required repairs. They're not financing required repairs. You don't need these to get done, but the buyer really wants them. Mm -hmm. um, they agree to these repairs in writing. If they put it outside the contract, you're limiting the ability to enforce those repairs. But sometimes it doesn't matter all that much. And then I get an addendum that says, purchase price to be 394 when it was originally 400,000, right? Uh -huh. And that's all I want. It's clear, concise, it says what it needs to. If you put, well, on Thursday when me and the buyers went through, we saw these things, it becomes like one of those math story problems. Uh -huh. Like everybody just wants to. <coughs> My wife was having a bad day that day and she said this, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, and it would be worse <laughs> if you list any safety soundness things and then reduce the price. So just make it, excuse me, clear and concise of what you want happen and make sure you cover every detail. Uh, I always like to tell my buyers that um, their loan documents are reviewed by someone with a fourth grade reading level and education. So unless it's super clear, because a lot of times they say, well, you can see if you look at this document and then look at this document and look at this document, that's what happened. It's, yes, I can see that. But we want the quality control department to be able to go through here and easily see. So we're going to put a letter of explanation in here, or we're going we're gonna to get the bank statements in a format that I'm used to seeing. Right, so make your contract really readable because the last thing you want to be doing is going to mediation or litigation pursuant to the failure of parties to comply with the legal document that you prepared for them. 